12 kilometres south of Gumaling, Western Australia, sits Rob Dempster's mixed enterprise property. Bought in 2011, its deep yellow sands bring all the challenges, including non-wetting topsoils, acidity in the top 70 centimetres of the soil profile, a lack of clay in the subsoil to sustain crops and moisture later in the season, and severe subsoil compaction. We've tried the rotary hoe, uh, a deep ripper, mobile plough, and the last one we tried was the modified one-way plough. So this is a, a chamber and plough which we've modified by removing the disc and bearing from every second journal. So that just allows us to get the one-way plough in a lot deeper than we could before. And because of the shape of these discs, it also inverts the soil, similar to what the moldboard does. Not quite as complete, a bit more of a mixing effect, but um, yeah, been really effective. Crop establishment and performance on this problematic deep yellow sand, which extends to more than 400 millimetres in depth, is the focus of a GRDC and AgVivo study. Trials in 2017 and 18 involving strategic and deep tillage options revealed that breaking up deep compacted subsoil is critical and can help some soil types improve access to deep moisture. So at this site, we've looked at removing the water repellents through topsoil inversion. Uh, we've looked at removing the subsoil compaction uh, with deep ripping, and we've looked at a combination of all of the above with lime to remove the subsoil acidity. Previous research has shown deep ripping these soils can boost wheat yields by up to 35%, with the best gains coming from deeper treatments. For these soils, water holding capacity is the biggest constraint. Deep ripping before seeding in 2015 solved the hard pan compaction but exacerbated water repellents. But the study is showing deep ripping is a key strategy after treatment with a mould board or one-way plough. So at this site, the very deep ripping technique has been the only treatment to give us a consistent response in wheat yield improvement as a result of the lack of water holding capacity to depth and the very deep ripping treatment allowing wheat roots to access that moisture at the back end of the season. On less constrained soils this technique has doubled yield results for the Dempsters. Cereals that were yielding 2 tonne to the hectare delivered 4 tonne. While soil benefits included more organic matter left close to the surface and a reduced risk of clay sealing. I think it's important to address the non-wetting through moldboard or one-way plough first and then address that very deep uh, compaction with, with the deep ripping. And very evident with the increased rooting depth that this is where our strong responses are being generated from this increased rooting depth on the deep yellow sand. So there's still moisture down there at 600 and 700. So uh, with this improved rooting depth, there's every chance uh, that it'll be able to access that resource. The trial is showing that on deeper sands, the ability to access moisture to finish the crop is particularly important. At this trial, the water limited yield potential for the previous two years was around 1.8 to 1.9 tonnes. However, the top uh, yield in this site was achieved at about 93% of that with the deep ripping or very deep ripping treatments. Whereas the ploughing or inversion techniques probably only delivered on about 45 to 50 per cent of that top end yield potential. Liming was used with every type of tillage treatment. In 2017, when the trial site was initially limed, topsoil pH was around 5.2 and at depth 4.5. At this stage, there's little yield response to that lime, but soil testing is revealing significant improvements. The inversion techniques of moldboard ploughing and one-way ploughing and the mixing techniques of deep ripping and spading have significantly improved the subsoil pH. You've got to get the lime deep, and as other research is showing, without the physical intervention, a lot of our applied lime is remaining at the soil surface. The project has been extended by two years to focus on subsoil moisture holding capacity, the best lime incorporation method, and the role and interaction inversion techniques can deliver to yield response. 
for growers thinking of investing in tillage equipment to tackle subsoil compaction, Tim Boy's advice is first research available information and experiment. One trial, their own particular machinery on their own soil types, and two, to observe and measure the outcomes of those trials to look at the long-term potential improvement. The DPIRD led GRDC soil constraints trial has fed a lot of information into both the GRDC website and the return on soil amelioration and ROSA and its development. Go to the description bar below for the latest information, links and resources.